Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That is Derek Young here for your weekly recruiting update, which is less of an update today and more of kind of a look at how things are shaping up for K-State and how maybe they've changed over the last handful of years for even Chris Kleiman's staff, but also even D.Y., who's been here now. Uh, what this is, is this season number eight for you? Year seven, season eight, because 2017 was the first time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. getting old. So you uh, you got to see a couple of Snyder classes, obviously ones that you know set up to what that uh, bad 2018 season was, and then led into climbing and how things have evolved. And the transfer portal is a different beast for it now. We've seen both K State basketball and football, in my opinion, both really benefit from it. I don't know that we've ever really had a significant moment where you think as somebody within the K State circle. Oh man, this is the the portal sucks. Get rid of it. Nigel Pack in basketball might be the closest you come to that, but different I mean, circumstances because his coach was leaving, and you obviously made out better on the other end. And fans freaked out about the basketball last year because, let's be honest, about everyone left. But it's like nothing against those players, but replaceable, upgradable, yeah. like. Uh, that's what it was. If you if you're not losing a cornerstone of your program, you're not really being disaffected by the transfer portal because all those mid tier players that you're losing, everyone else is too. Especially yeah. in basketball, where it's a little bit more prevalent. Yeah. Um, football wise, like yeah, you lost Will Howard, but I think you kind of nudged him that way. Yeah. You lost Kobe Savage, but. Again, a replaceable player. They got to be better at safety to to kind of make that really come through. But yeah, in terms of the transfer portal, I don't think it's hurt them. An interesting nugget too. Maybe this will just be a cool cool thing that people will be like, "Oh, really? That happened?" But I started covering K State in 2017. But there was like 18 months before that. I'm trying to think what year it, it was across 2014 and 2015, just before I moved to Iowa City to cover the Iowa Hawkeyes. I lived in Kansas City for about 18 months and basically covered regional recruiting for scouts. So I was covering kids in Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and doing the JUCOs and and in Nebraska a little bit, maybe Iowa too. I actually broke Denzel Goolsby's commitment to Kansas State. That was the my first like breakthrough like story was breaking Denzel Goolsby committing to Kansas State. Well, Wichita guy, there you go. So uh, <laughs> shout out Denzel Goolsby. Uh, with with the way things are setting up for K State right now, obviously we remember at the you know middle the tail end of the summer, K State obviously comes through and they get the Lincoln Cure commitment, which is massive. I mean, when you first got to K State 2017, did you ever imagine that K State would be landing a five star no. recruit in football, even? <laughs> even if they were somebody that was native to Kansas. No, no. It, the best kids in Kansas weren't really looking at Kansas State. The brand was even lesser at the time, despite Bill Snyder being the coach. And some of that was a lack of recruiting focus. And they, they did look inward more at that time until Bill Snyder ran his program. And... If you aren't getting on kids early enough, even if they are in state, it's just hard. For example, the tail end of 2018, which is Bill Snyder's final season, and this isn't meant as a criticism because he had his own way of being successful and it worked. So I'm not going to judge him. If he tried to be someone he was not, it was probably going to be even worse than what it turned out to be, especially in 2018 when Kansas State missed a bull under Bill Snyder in his final season. But they paid basically no attention to Brees Hall that year. And because of that, there was just too much ground to make up, even when Chris Kleiman became the coach. That, or because I think Dana Dimmel was the guy who was supposed to be recruiting at that time. And, and basically, even when Kansas State wanted to recruit him, and maybe he made his decision before Kleiman was hired, either way, like they didn't even get a look from Brees Hall because they probably didn't apply the appropriate amount of attention because they felt like it was better used elsewhere. Maybe they were right. 
with that given staff. But that's what I'm trying to say. Regardless of that five stars in Kansas or not, it was just not going to happen for them unless it was a special given set of circumstances like, even though he wasn't from Kansas, Daniel Green from Portland, Oregon, his special set of circumstances allowed K-State to be a player in that recruitment. Yeah, Brees Hall, he he did commit before climbing. Uh, June of 2018 is when he made the commitment there. But yeah, that that's probably the greatest highlight of where K-State kind of sat. And we we've talked about now over the last couple of years, people are probably to the point where they're surprised if multiple kids in the top 10 don't go to Kansas State because they've been loading up and they've just been cleaning up uh, the last couple of years there. But there was that long stretch where it was, you know, you look at the top five kids in Kansas, not a single one of them is going to K-State. And then obviously not a single one of them is going to KU either. And K-State's consecutive season. Yeah. It, it was like, again, it's going to sound like a drag on Coach Snyder, and I'm not trying to do that. But there was like four or five straight seasons where Kansas State couldn't dream of signing a top five kid in Kansas. And if they yeah. did, it was just one or two. And now you're talking about, you're going to sign at least one or two for sure. And you got a shot the other three. It's what it typically feels like. Although for this class at times, it didn't feel that way. Right. But Jaden Woods going elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, who was the other kids uh, in, in this 2025 class at uh, the top? Well, Babalola is at the top. Yeah. Uh, Brame is going to Tennessee and then Merritt was the and, other. And, and it probably feels like an opportunity lost there because Jaden Woods, Dad mm -hmm. played at K-State, Deshaun Brain, parents went to K-State, still wouldn't work. But you got Lincoln Cure, like it's it's a little bit of a top-heavy class, not necessarily a deep class. What We could probably stretch out to top 10. We'd probably be more correct in what we were trying to accomplish there. But, yeah, they are taking – it's interesting because what I said at the tail end of, of Snyder is that the next coach at Kansas State needs to do better in Kansas and needs to do better in Missouri – because there is more local talent than meets the eye. And if you sign a good chunk of the top 10 or top 15 from each state, you're in business. And I also said, and then you basically supplement that with the JUCOs, because at that time, the JUCOs in Kansas were still loaded as well. I remember it was only a year or two prior to that. You had Alvin Kamara and Chris Carson, both at Hutchin and Butler. And so, But now the JUCO is gone, but you can still supplement it through the transfer portal, which is exactly what Chris Kleiman is doing. He's nailing the transfer portal almost every single year outside of a spot or two. Like linebacker, you look at the transfer portal linebackers, I think they've what landed four or five since not 20, and I'm not sure one has taken a snap yet. So yeah, I mean, never forget Brandon Jennings. Brandon Jennings, Sean Robinson, Will Honus, Alec Marenko. Yeah. Like, it's a rough – like, they're, they're snake bit at linebacker. And then on top of that, once it gets to the season, everybody gets hurt at the linebacker spot too. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know what's going on at linebacker. That's a weird thing. The the fact that they could patchwork it together to still be competent enough is probably um, an impressive feat. And I say that about nose guard too, although they've hit nose guard and transfer port a little bit. Uh, just for kind of reference, the 2019 class in Kansas, the top 10, K-State only landed one player. It was Keenan Garber. Uh, who is you know still here obviously and and playing well, but at corner not receiver. Outside of that, Graham Mertz went to Wisconsin. At K State probably dodged a bullet there. Marcus Hicks, OU, Brees Hall, Iowa State, Dylan Jordan, TCU, Easton Dean, dodged Iowa the, State. Dodged the bullet there on Dylan Jordan. Yeah, uh, Amari <laughs> Pesic Hickson, KU, Clay mm. Cundiff, Wisconsin, Jaden Russell, Miami of Ohio, and then Joe Mikowski, uh to Oklahoma Ooh. State, which not a loaded class there, pretty top heavy. If you look at twenty, was loaded with Kai Thomas, Turner Corcoran, and all them. We're like, oh my yep. gosh, this class is. And going that to and that's a good example there of a class where Kleiman and his staff probably just got here too late to make they got up there ground. Too late. The one they got with, I think, was Nate Matlack. Yep, Nate Matlack, number six. Uh, and Felix was in that class from Kansas City on the other side of the river. Yeah, uh, they got a lot of the guys towards the bottom of it all. But, yeah, the top of that class, Corcoran to Nebraska, um, and then a couple of guys to Minnesota, Daniel Jackson, Kai Thomas. The 19 um, class, which is uh, you said they got one in the top 10, and that's Keenan mm -hmm. Garber. Does not count Cooper Beebe, who's not in the top 10. Yeah, Cooper Beebe was 11th in that class. <laughs> uh, so they And that, that might be kind, depending on the recruiting service that you look at, because we know that some – 
uh, didn't like some of those guys. Uh, he, didn't play, he didn't play much of a senior year because he broke his foot. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, rivals had him as a two star 24 seven ESPN at least had him as a three. So yeah, it's, it's just kind of fascinating to see where it's come from now in terms of where K state has grown, even from the climbing classes where you can say, okay, this was a, a full climbing job. He put a stamp on it to where they sit now. Where is K state recruiting heading? What is the the direction and how comfortable should people be with it? I think they know what they're looking for and they get it. Sometimes it happens to be that guy that's ranked high and sometimes it doesn't. They seem to be resting in that 35 to 45 range in terms of rankings. You'd like it to be closer to 30 because it, you know, even though I'm not married to the rankings, typically the higher it is, the the better chance you got. What I will say is there is like five to 10 programs where rankings are not very reflective of that team. I I believe in recruiting rankings for the most part, but there are some teams that just you're, you're they're going to get kids probably at least five in each class where every every service is going to be like I don't like that kid and those five kids end up being studs right kids they just had that in the last class right I think the ranking services typically like their offensive line uh, but did they like Zayshon Rich? Probably not. And yeah. he's the only one playing early. <laughs> so yeah. it, it's one of the, like there, Iowa is typically like that. Kansas state is definitely like that. Wisconsin used to always be like that. It's those blue collar programs that are so good at talent development and they know and could identify a kid that's going to be that good, but it's probably two or three years from it. Like Desmond Purnell is another one, right? Mm -hmm. I bet he wasn't top 10 in anybody's state rankings, and he's probably the best linebacker on the team right now. Although Austin Romaine looks really good. Guess what? That awesome class with Avery Johnson and Dylan Edwards and all of them, he was in Missouri, but Austin Romaine was like the worst ranked kid in that class. Him and Chidi Obi Izor, I think we're at the bottom. And Jack Fabris. Yeah, uh, so the 2021 class, Des Purnell, was eighth uh if you're going through and looking at the kansas class it was a it was a very weak kansas class now depending on who you look at here uh there are some places heading 10 not even in ranked in kansas but yeah that was devin neal was number one and then the rest of the class was that was a bad one yeah daryl jones Devontae pritchard noah boltikoff dorian stevens gavin haselhorst austin water desperate damian neil leo neil pernell and eli leo are the only ones doing anything yeah so uh, there you go there. Uh, good time to remind everybody that K-State gearing up to go over to Ireland. The the few lucky recruits in the class of 2025 that might get to experience that trip, very fortunate to get in this year. If you're a class of 2026 guy, tough stuff. You're just going to have to go to Ames instead of Dublin. But you can join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2020-25 football season against Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, and exclusive K-State welcome experience and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two ireland.com all right well that'll do it for us today i figured a good time to kind of just kind of reflect on how things have changed for k-state recruiting and i think what you said at the end is probably the best thing where even if the there can be similarities at times where you see k-state going after a kid pretty hard and you're like oh my gosh this guy has five gray stars or he's not ranked where you want the difference is is that at the end of the snyder era it was because there were some struggles that were going on now, for the most part, I think Chris Kleiman and his staff have built up enough trust and success to where you can realize they know what they're doing and they're doing it with a purpose. They see something in a player, they're going to get it done. And you can take a couple flyers in every class. And not everybody's going to work out even in big-time classes. Uh, and Chris Kleiman and his staff have certainly set K-Stay up nicely moving forward. So that'll do it for us today. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching the KSO Show. We will be back again tomorrow. little coordinator cliff time as Connor Riley, Joe Klanderman talk to the media after their big performances against Arizona.